Portal Player of the Year in this league, if not the country. 15,564 on hand at the Excel Center, and we're underway. Our officials today, James Greeting, John Gaffney, Tony Chiazza. Inside, Klingon count. That count, constant motion, Tim, the, the misdirection, if you will. You take your eyes off of Klingon slipping to the basket, and this team is so willing to make the extra pass, Rukon. Joplin, they need a big game from him today. Oh, the iron kind to open, and we're tied at a deuce. It's not a UConn team that is going to change what they do on the ball defensively. They're going to man up. It's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. Marquette's going to have to find ways like that to take advantage of those matchups. Beautiful cut by Caravan and the feed from Newton. Communication is so important when you're on the road, and I know it's early in the game, it's loud in this building, but you have to point and talk and make sure your teammates hear you defensively. There Woo! it is! Hello! How do you do? Iguodaro from the Player of the Year a season ago. You'll see a lot of that. getting his first taste of Marquette. What a freshman he's been. Inside, Clinton, and he's fouled. Got a little help that time. But the crisp passing into the post area, really evident early in this game for both sides. Uh, unselfishness is what defines both of these teams. This is just awesome kind of misdirection. You got to stay awake on the ball, maybe more ball pressure, hands up, and then here, drop coverage. We've talked about how good Klingon is with Zach Eady and the, those two guys being head and shoulders above anyone else in their drop coverage, meaning how they play that pick and roll. Well, you got to get there quicker if you're Klingon. The kid from nearby Bristol whose mom was an incredible talent herself and passed away a few years ago. A homespun star that is sure to be felt throughout the course of this day by Marquette. And this is how Iguodaro is just so unique. He can start their offense. He initiates a lot of that. And at times, he puts the big on the other team in a, in a tough spot. Pull it from three. Spencer with the tap out. Newton with numbers. Waited for the trailer caravan. Off the heel. Pulled down by Jones. Marquette dodged the bullet there. Got to find guys. Oh, Cam with a blow by. Spencer a little late getting over. The on ball defense is going to be so important for Spencer and Caravan in particular because the guys they're guarding are strong and quick. Newton inside Klingon. That's easy. That is a huge advantage they have size-wise. Marquette not known for its interior. Iguodaro has improved in that area. Precious little help, however. That one doesn't fall. Iguodaro may have gotten away with a bit of a push. Kolek going to blow by in traffic. Sends it out to the three-point line. Look at that work defensively by Castle. And the tap out. Spencer going for it. Joplin comes away with it. Numbers. Great defensive play by Newton. He just stayed with it. Stevie Mitchell is another guy they need to play big today. And that teardrop falls short. And on the takeaway, will be called for the foul. Six field goals, all told, all in the paint. You look at Shotless Smart, now in his third year, AP Coach of the Year a season ago. What a remarkable job he's done, and much like Danny Hurley, has created a culture in a short span of time.
in Milwaukee. And creates it without the transfer portal. That's what makes Shaka Smart and this Marquette team so unique. Kessel, he likes that spot. Off the heel. And a quick rebound from Cam Jones. He's been money. He's a great rebounding guard. Kolick. When he gets to his left, forget about it. And he can get there to that strong hand with the best of them. But in a game like this, officials are looking at hands slapping down. you got to be strong with your body. They're going to let some contact when it comes to physicality in the body. Just can't reach. Kessel working on Kolek. That ball was deflected. Igadaro got a hand on it. And the first live ball turnover comes Marquette's way. Look at that hesitation. In traffic, he gives it up. On the wing, Jones. He needs to make those today. They need Jones and Mitchell to be money from deep. Joplin as well at the four spot. Great work by Castle on the defensive end. Knocked away by Klingon. What a fast paced start to this game. Constant pursuit of the basketball. Neither side ever stopped. Dan Hurley said even early last year, you better get us now because we're going to be ungettable soon. There's a lot of confidence from both of these coaches. They've combined for 7 of 9 shooting in the paint, 0 for 8 outside the paint. The Vigaro, yeah. he loves yeah, that little soft move yeah. right to the nail. It, it's a unique perspective for Klingon because you're not used to a big moving like that with the ball in his hand. Be an interesting matchup to watch the yeah. rest of the day. And you'll see Samson Johnson getting yeah. a lot of help because once Iguodaro's got you out there, you may need quick feet. And coming from the backside, that one's rejected. Crowd wanted a foul, did not get it. Clinging out, Samson Johnson checks in. Yeah, this is nice. Change of direction. And talk about, we never talk about bigs being two way players. Nice little floater then. Also coming from behind yep. with the block on defense. I think it's uh, evident that they're letting him play early on. Only five to shoot. Caravan. Newton rebounding from the guard position, but that pass a little low off of the instep of Caravan, and it belongs to Marquette. And it's a turnover, but it shows you the, the pressure that UConn keeps on you because just because they get a, an offensive rebound doesn't mean they're going to set their offense again. They're trying to find someone open and trying to score, even more importantly, from three-point range. That's when you have those open shots. It's a stop and go. Marquette going to its bench. How about that? A rebound when you're on the seat of your pants. Chase Ross just into the game. Had that one fall right in his lap. Wisely didn't move with it. But, but Timmy, I don't know how this is a jump ball. If, if so, if I put my knee in your gut as you're on the ground, I would think I'm calling a foul on you. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Johnson's just, I mean, that is a scrum. Yeah, letting him play might be an understatement. <laughs> oh. Well, it pops out. All begins with him. Got it up on the rim. That's a great block out by Johnson. Look at Kolick. Never stops working to tap it out. And a steal from Tristan Newton. Numbers three on two. Spencer. This crowd will tell you everything today. A little bit different matchup there with Samson Johnson on Iguodaro. A little bit more athleticism. Not going to be able to get those quick floaters off as easy as you would against Klingon. Piero also in the game. And a foul on the mismatch after the switch as Chase Ross was in trouble with Samson Johnson and committed the foul. Talk about how efficient UConn is offensively, but a lot of that comes from their defense, and that's what creates it. They give each other some nice space. you got the right guy handling the ball. And you have playmakers, not just guys who are going to catch and shoot. They're going to catch it, read the D, put it down like Cam Spencer did there, create a little space for himself and knock it down. That's a great find by Castle into the corner of the air. How, how good of a find was that by Castle? Ross right back at you to Jones. 
Count the basket. And you know what? He didn't need to do that. He got his hand into that cylinder area. That was going to be a miss. He had altered the shot already. I like it, though. I know it's two points for Marquette, but if I'm UConn, I, I like that intensity. I like that now Samson Johnson, the thought of him being around, already contested one Igadaro floater, and then goes up and contests a the shot. They call. Who knows? We've seen that call. Oh, yeah. Just the a call that they don't call at all, and you keep playing, so... The activity, I think, is what's most important for UConn in transition defensively against Marquette early. Well, you're an old soccer player. Coley just gave you the uh, left footer. I like it. Side out. Yep. UConn. Yep. <laughs> the corner kick. Yep. And ready for the throw-in, Stefan <laughs> Kessel. Get your uh, sports glossaries out to follow us today. I think that's the next part of his game when he comes off to catch and attack instead of the catch and survey for Castle. Well, Cole's got a little too physical with Spencer. Shaka took exception to James Breeding's call. That's number two on Cam. So he's going to have to go to his bench quickly and get uh, Stevie Mitchell back into the game. And Cam Jones, one of those, I would say, X factors in a game like this, has missed a couple shots already, and, and now you compound your problems with the misses. You take a look at him trying to chase Spencer. You got to give him a chance to run. You, you, you curl him tight and hope that your guy on the ball is helping you. Johnson! Slamson Johnson! Sixteen to twelve, Connecticut. Ben Gold is on the floor in the black and blue. Mitchell fouled by Johnson. Ball fake got him in the painted area. Got to have your head on a uh, on a swivel, as coaches like to say. Really, the ball pressure there. You're either on the baseline on the ball or you back way up and that's a great job on the interior pass because sometimes when players are defending you and you're taking the ball out of bounds then all you have to do is step back to create some space as a passer and that's exactly what happened they are at a johnson beautiful play stevie who goes by stewie on his podcast <laughs> at the free throw line he and game jones get together that's his first point of the afternoon Reading, Pennsylvania. 40 steals. Tied for first on the team with Kolick. Fourth in the Big East. This after coming off a hamstring injury back in December. thing I love most about Stevie Mitchell, 4.0 GPA last semester. Come on, man. Yep. And also three of his last five games with a double figure. That helps on the court. Joplin got his hand into the passing lane. Got clocked down to 10. Piara working pick and roll to Johnson. Oh, he missed on the reversal. Was right there. Chose to finesse it rather than slam it. Mitchell with a little stop and go. Leaves it for Ben Gold from downtown. Spencer Field. Ben Gold's one of those guys, too. He creates some interesting situations for bigs of the opponents. He can stretch it out. Now Caravan. Out to a shaky start from the perimeter. That aids Marquette because if he gets going, I mean, it could be lights out in a hurry. Joplin with a baseline blast into traffic. Mitchell, I say, counted. Not only smart in the classroom, but smart on the court as well. He sees everyone cleared out, takes his time. A little big man down low. Well, he's learned now that, you know, that perimeter game that he struggled with to some extent, it can get better once you go inside. Castle double gives it up to Johnson. Castle under duress. That was a tough shot. Great defense yeah. by Marquette. Beautiful possession defensively. Samson Johnson never turned the shoulders looking at the basket that entire possession. Well, it turns it over. That was an errant pass. And Spencer will grab a foul on the ball thing. Well, look, Timmy, you know how I feel. I, 
even with those offensive rebounds, they've not been able to cash in with any trace. So it's amazing that yeah. they're holding up against an offense as efficient as UConn's on the road without hitting any threes. They also have committed five fouls. This is not as deep a Marquette team as UConn is. So matching them in terms of depth on what could be a long, grinding regular season game on the road might be difficult. They're going to need to defend without fouling the rest of this half. Uh, it, they seemed a little unsettled, in my opinion, Marquette, to start this game. Almost trying to find out what defense UConn might be running. I'm sure they've watched a lot of tape. UConn can run zone if, if they, at times, just to throw some things off. But I, I feel like Marquette just, that first 10 minutes or so, wasn't quite settled in. See how they are after that time. Well, you know what? What a smart move by Shaka. Yeah. Ibadaro's out there clinging back on the floor, and he lets Oso bring it up the floor as a point forward, so to speak. It's just so, you know, some people say unorthodox. I say unique. Yep. Danny Ferry, among others yeah. from the NBA, are taking a long look at Iguodaro today. Offensive rebound this time for Stewart. And the Seattle kid gets into the scoring column near and dear to Donnie Marshall's home. 20 to 18, Connecticut by a deuce. When you get in the game, you want to do something special. And that's exactly what Stewart does right there. Oh. Just in there, bruising with the pigs. Couldn't get it to go. Pulled away by Winston Newton. And he'll pump it. Diara, the long rebound. Lost it. Clinton tried to save it and couldn't. Mitchell rejected by Stewart. That brings them to their feet. Lead of five for either team. Igadaro again. Not this time. Look out, Connecticut. Open gates. They love the 94 feet. Pulled down by David Joplin. Marquette looks to slow it down just a bit. If you're going to weather the storm against Yukon, it can't be hoping they miss open shots or turning the ball over. Uh, Joplin just lost sight of where Diara was. Yeah, this is a shock of smart team we know doesn't turn the ball over a lot. They value possessions. You can't get loosey goosey in a game like this against Tucson. You just can't. I think we've got a little debate. It will be UConn's basketball. James Breeding had a better look. And Gaffney relented. And the Huskies have the ball. I love this. You're a freshman. You get a chance. Shoot the basketball. You get in the game. You go and follow your own shot. You finish with the left. Jalen Stewart, wonderful job. Comes back down after that and gets a blocked shot on defense. Young man out of Garfield High School. Played for Brandon Roy. Really getting an opportunity here late when you want to as a freshman. Late in the season. Because you know that roster, that, that rotation has to start to tighten up for every team in the country. Uh, Brandon Roy, what a great guard he was mm -hmm. for Lorenzo Romar back in the day at UW. Five to shoot. Stewart has it knocked away. they got to put it up. Spencer, it grazed the iron, but there's Castle again to Stewart. And it's tapped out of there. Chase Ross chasing it down the floor, and he's fouled. Uh, he's going to call it a common foul. First foul on Newton. And beyond that, the issue, I think, for them is to not just mold into Connecticut's style of play. That last two-and-a-half-minute period in the last segment of our game was exactly what Connecticut wanted and not what shot the smart needs today. Yeah, I agree with that. I think they're playing like like a guest, like they're the guest of the party. They have to play Marquette like they belong here today and that they have a chance to win because they do. And on that dribble drive, the foul is spotted underneath against Castle, his first, just the third team foul against Connecticut. 
You mentioned there were five on Marquette. They came in a flurry during that period in which Connecticut got out to this five-point lead. But for the most part, the whistle has been loose, which is really what you want to see when you've got two great teams going at it. Neither team really hitting that often from downtown. Points of Ruben coming inside the paint. Klingon started that turnover. Castle in traffic. And it's out of bounds to UConn. And again, that inside strength of Connecticut not allowing the offensive rebounds that were there early for this Marquette team. Interesting lineup for Shaka Smart right now. Marquette has Bold and Iguodaro in the game together. I like this matchup. I, I think it throws off what UConn has scouted against. And Spencer. Beautiful isolation and a screen right there, baseline. And the lead has ballooned to seven. This is a 7 nothing run now for the defending national champs. And a reach against Castle. A second quickly comes against him. That gets Danny Hurley up. So if there is a team that runs better out of bounds unders I'd love to know who they are this is just terrific in terms of weaving continuous motion understanding who you're setting it for and in the pass pinpoint Spencer two down low the thing of beauty Iguodaro has his pocket picked by Diera. well that's Cam Jones you got to be careful you got to see what's yeah. going on behind indeed clears it you can't throw the ball into a big and not understand what's behind him because obviously the big has no eyes in the back of his head you're his eyes as the passer he's trying to post up Spencer tough take and he gives it up now Joplin on a give and go and a foul they're going to tag Spencer with this one <laughs> early Beginning to count them up. Doesn't take long for the uh, counting of team fouls to add up, both on the floor and on social media. And it's already happening. I mean, he stepped on the basketball. He did. There's contact, but no more than there's been, not even close to what there's been earlier in this game. Gold. The iron unkind. Here comes Newton the other way. He's not scored as yet. He's been shut down. Now on the switch with Iguodaro. Let's see if he tries to take him. That's just great work by Osa Iguodaro, isn't it? 6'11 on 6'3. Samson Johnson on a beautiful cut, and no one was there for Marquette. Uh, you think your work is done when you stopped one player. It's just not a thing against UConn. Public answers. That ends a 9 nothing run. And bench points all with the Huskies. They've outscored the Golden Eagles bench. But there are a lot of teams in there that I would not want to play. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not. That's the next thing we start to talk about. Who's in your bracket? Okay, yes, they're, uh, they're an eight seed. We do not want any part of them <laughs> unless we have to, until yeah. we have to. There are a lot of teams in that board like that. Spencer tapped out by Jensen. And Newton threw it away. I think you're going to say the ball was tipped by Kolick. So Connecticut will control. That's that deflection is so important, especially on the road for Marquette. Those deflections, you just... They're disruptors, and we have not seen a lot of those this first half for Marquette. These teams are really efficient from beyond the arc, Connecticut particularly, but everyone struggling, clearly defending the three. Getting them off the line was a focal point for both teams in preparation. Spencer trying to run that curl, and there's just no room. Beautiful adjustment, though. He's such a smart player. Came over from Rutgers. He's got nine. Ross. He chases one in from downtown. The first three ball of the day for Marquette. 
They're going to need they're going to need a few more of those just to keep UConn honest and not continue to pack it in the paint, knowing that Marquette is missing from the outside. Two of nine now from three. Yeah, and Mitchell with a bump on Newton. I think you you could make an argument when we talk about Big East Player of the Year. Cam Spencer's name should be in that mix. Oh yeah, he's so effective. Obviously, just an intelligent player. Beautiful step through there after you get the bigger Iguodaro up in the air. I think it's difficult for any UConn player though because absolutely they're they're you know where you're going. They're so balanced. They're so balanced. Yeah, there's you know, so Newton, many guys. Yeah, Newton hasn't scored yet, right? Uh, but he's done a lot of other things. And he's the one we talk about as right. you know he's on our Nate Smith and every other <laughs> Player of the Year award list. He does have four dimes dropped. As I've said many times a year ago, about this time, he was considered the liability of this yeah. team. Look how far he's come as a point guard. His confidence just grew in last year's NCAA. Diara up against the clock. Look at that work by Caravan. Newton! Three and change remaining in the opening half. That one's off the heel for Zade Lowry just into the game. Caravan on the drive. He's fouled. They just keep coming downhill at you. Timmy, they never give up in their pursuit. To make you uncomfortable. In the I'll tell you, at some point, should he be in this? Uh, <laughs> should he be in the building while we're having practice? Yeah, yeah. But he got it, and he he understood. Yeah. Sort of shook it off yeah. himself. Yeah. Well, he said he's with Jake Crowder, who's yeah. a teammate there, and obviously a <laughs> former Marquette player. He's like, all right, if he's with Jay, I guess I, you know, I, yeah. I can trust him. <laughs> you think about the this iteration of UConn and how they've handled the loss of Jackson. I think they've done two players, really. I think the acquisition of Spencer and the emergence of Castle as a freshman have really filled the void left by Andre Jackson as the glue of this team. Yeah, the, the only thing that you worry about when you lose a guy like that, one is the energy, but also the leadership. Well, there's the pick and roll for the first time. Johnson right there for it. Passes it out of the post, and again, nothing doing from downtown as Marquette remains ice cold from beyond the arc. Case lost, saw that one go crying off the front iron. I thought he, he had enough time to check the wind direction and take his time. He looked like he was in a little bit of a hurry when he caught it and let it go. And this last two and change really meaningful to Marquette because the Huskies have opened up their first double-digit lead. And buckets on this end of the floor have been hard to come by. So I don't think you want to start chasing those. I thought Iguodaro should have shot that little floater yes. from inside the foul line. Last field goal they made was him yeah. with that play. He brought the ball up the floor, out of a timeout. And it was at that stage that they really needed him to make a bucket, and he did. And they, they've not gone to him since. Yeah, and as much as I love Joplin's three, I, I don't think it's a better shot than Iguodaro from inside the paint at the top there. You just don't want to start chasing him. I know it's it's just human nature as a player. You're down double digits. You see you got under three minutes to go before you're in the locker room, but can't get it all back in one or two plays. First free throw of the day for Newton. We touched on those players lost from the national championship season. Sonogo, Andre, of course, as we mentioned, Joey California. Danny Hurley called him, and of course, Naheem Aline transferred over to Rick Pitino and St. John's. That's a, that's a heck of a team to lose, but boy, did he supplement. And uh, the Cavalry is coming yeah. again next year, too, by the way. Yeah, and your guys are, are more mature. Caravan, Klingon. We got some, some more mature players coming back as well. The lead is up to a dozen now. Kolick. Well, you can almost tell that they were only trying to get a three in that possession. That was the only play they were looking to run. Yep. And that's a, a part of Tyler's game that has improved, but it's certainly not his greatest strength. Diara. 
little teardrop, and he's going to pick up a foul. In so doing, Iguodaro. Yeah, these are tough plays to defend, the, the, the floaters, Timmy, because as a defender, you understand when that offensive player shoots a floater, his body, his momentum is coming towards the basket. So if there's any contact, no matter if you're standing straight up, if you don't take a charge, it's going to be a, a block, as you saw there. But it's a hard, hard shot to defend more and more. Last year, these teams played three times. Pet got them at home. UConn blew out the Golden Eagles here at home. And then, of course, the semifinal matchup. And Danny Hurley told me today at the shoot-around, he said, they just locked us up. We got defended beyond what our expectations were. Marquette was locked and loaded to win both the regular season and the tournament title. Kolek leaves it for Iguodaro. That combination, and he missed that little teardrop that normally falls for him. Wing it again from Spencer. And that is when they play like this. And during this extended run of 22 to 6, UConn's been lighting it up on both ends of the floor. They're unstoppable. And if you don't think they can be a dominant program, then you haven't been watching. They certainly can be when they play this way with this much depth. Another turnover off the double team. Just a little bit too much with the basketball in one guy's hand. That ball has to pop against UConn. They're really good on the ball defensively. They help each other. You can't dribble into that. What a pass! Dropping dimes! Diara, Newton, and the lead is up to 18. This is turning into a Connecticut coronation. Cam Jones with a silencer of sorts. 12 assists on 14 field goals now for Connecticut. I think we're getting a little warning here from James Breeding in the aftermath of that bucket. And this is just basketball players doing what they do. That's not a drawn-up play. It's not a Princeton-style, you cut back door. This is one player reading a teammate. After two seasons now, they have been on a string. Diara and Newton... And sometimes not necessarily in that order. Boy, what a show. Some more strength. I mean, this is a Tom Moore, Damani Young, Luke Murray. They've done a wonderful job of staying and kind of being Danny Hurley's you know, balance. But he's trusted them more this season as well. Danny's coaching college basketball like a PGA Tour player after he wins his first major. Suddenly, yeah. <laughs> the titles come a little easier than they once yeah. did. Yes. He's so much more comfortable in his own skin. Up against the clock, Spencer with the rock. Gives it up. Caravan has yet to make a three. There he is, going right back, though, to the baseline. Rejected by Iguodaro. Clinging not in time. Wave it off. Will not count. Boy, they just keep coming at you. I know the shot clock was short, but making those extra plays... Making your teammates better. They call them EGBs, energy generating behavior. Yep. They keep stats of this. They're going to need a lot of that, Chakas guys, in this second half. And the first five to eight minutes in particular. Listen to these hustle stats, all right? Courtesy Ethan Peterson. UConn, plus nine in boards, plus seven second chance, plus eight in bench, plus seven in points off turnovers, plus eight in fast break points. Spencer looks for. Caravan, and again, he can't get it to fall. He has not made a three as yet. That's the only good news, really, for Marquette defensively in that first half. Castle, tough shot. Klingon fighting to keep it, but lost it out of bounds. And the Golden Eagles have it. And Castle has um, some foul difficulty and also... From a Buckets perspective, just three in the game for him, but he and Spencer lit it up early. Pull it, a patented move with a not-too-typical finish. Pollock really struggling. UConn's done a nice job against him defensively. 
what he's done coming into this game. The offensive glass, though, is really a backbreaker. Yeah. UConn plus 10 on the glass just can't continue to happen. If you're Marquette, you got to give yourself a chance at one end of the floor or the other. That's the first rejection of the day for Klingon. Jones, they needed both he and Joplin to shoot it well, and neither have today. They are getting a bit of a break. The caravan is struggling from downtown, but that has been it. On the chant, let's go Huskies, already underway to open the second. Newton against the clock. Look at them fighting for those loose balls. Hustle plays. And Connecticut keeps on grinding. They're going to say tie ball. It will go to Marquette. Yeah, I really still believe that Klingon staying out of foul trouble. He, he, and I know it sounds crazy, but he seems just more versatile. He seems just more free to be able to come out and block shots like that. Well, it didn't hurt when he left the game that Samson Johnson came in and got a couple of slams. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. His confidence was outstanding, yeah. too. Igadaro had to change his approach. Now, that's a two-headed monster in terms of the way you're being defended. Joplin working on Castle. That's going to be a block. Crab doesn't like it. They felt that shoulder had been dipped. But James Breeding called otherwise. So it's a block. It goes against Castle. That's his third. I, look, I'm all for the officials trying to clean up parts of the game and trying to tell us 95% of these are going to be blocked. But I still think they're subjective to, to some oh, yeah. extent. Yeah. I, I still can't figure out what a block and a charge is, no matter how much they clean this thing up. It's a little like uh, pass interference versus uh, offensive right. pass interference. Yeah. <laughs> I have to deal with this three more months than you do. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Joplin really struggling in every aspect today. We talked about the beginning of the game that this is a team that when they lock up defensively and their offense is there, could be Connecticut's kryptonite. They did beat him twice a year ago. Very few teams did. All right. But they've got to get the best offensive games possible out of Joplin and Cam Jones, and today they've not. Yeah, and Joplin's one of those guys, you, you hate to put pressure on guys like him, but when he's playing well, they're just a, they're a completely different team. He's in double figures, they're 12-1. and one. Yeah, much harder to guard. <laughs> yeah. Great work by Kolick. Trying to tie him up. Newton. Clean! Like a magnet to the ball. First player in double figures, Donovan Klingon. See, that's where Cam Jones has to score. You got the big in the air, try to score. You're not a passer from three feet away. That's yeah. where that confidence comes in. And talk about confidence. This is just, you're in the playground now. Dribbling from your fanny and then you throw it to a wide open teammate. And then Klingon was just posted up down there. Right place, right time. Finally, one falls from downtown for Cam Jones. And the Memphian finally gets one to fall. He had 11 at Butler the other night. I thought that game, and it was tough. It was a grind to win that game at Hinkle. I thought that really helped prepare Marquette for this matchup. We talked to Shaka about that prior to the game. But uh, the Huskies put the clamps down when it was tied at 18 in the first half. Number one against number four. Connecticut trying to get further separation in the Big East. Diara. Oh, the bank is open on Saturday in the Nutmeg State. And those are plays where the opposing coach just says, you know what? <laughs> no, 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 we can do about that. Oh, well, Iguodaro is shocked to get that ball from Joplin. They are really discombobulated. Klingon has a lot to do with it, too. Diara. Oh, look at that. The 
two players lost it. Freeman found it and knew what to do. I finish. I don't know that any of these guys know Bootsy Collins. No, they probably not. Probably not. But I'm just going to tell you. Google it. <laughs> Klingon is tearing the roof off the rim right now for sure. 51-30. Marquette has got to reestablish some poise. I mean, they've got wide eyes right now. As you said, playing like guests. Iguodaro there with the, with the follow. And that's only because Tyler Kolek, again, you don't want to put the pressure on one guy. But when he gets downhill and he puts the defense in uncomfortable spots, Iguodaro's much better as well. And you turn the corner, help comes, finish. They need more of that. This has to be many games within this half for Marquette. Yeah, still plenty of time. Newton, by the way, 9.6 boards, 6 assists. And he's fouled there on a hand check. By Stevie Mitchell, that's number three on him. They're going to fix the roof, Tim. <laughs> it we'll does, right, and we'll be right back. It does need some work, doesn't it? <laughs> and with the, the game emerging the way it is, players like Angel Reese at LSU for Kim Mulkey and, of course, uh, Caitlin Clark. Juju and, Watkins out. Oh, yeah. yeah man. Amazing. Women's college basketball is Taking off. phenomenal. Yep, sure is. Bring in with options. Passes off to DR and he's rejected. Got a little too unselfish that time. Yeah, I'd like to see him shoot that little floater, half hook in there. Why not? Kolek again trying to pass it off to Iguodaro in tight quarters, and it's yet another turnover. It really is the clinging effect because even Iguodaro, that ball hit him in the head. You got to know Kolek's coming to you, but yeah. because Klingon takes up so much space, even on accident, Klingon takes up a lot of space. You just, you, you, He's in your area, he, and then in that case, he's what we like to say, he's in your kitchen. All up in your head, clinging. He was surprised by that pass from Caravan. Yep. Came in there high and hard. Our friend uh, Rob Dibble works in this market. This is home for him. Yeah. <laughs> they they got a little nasty boys on that He's one. down in Florida in the yeah. sun. He just texted me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was a little taken aback. He didn't call me for his show this week, but uh, he said, hey, man, I'm, I'm in Florida. That's it. Playing in with yet another rebound. The Godaro stuck his hand in there and created that turnover. Cannot play loose with a big lead against these guys. Jones, air ball. Just, they have not gotten in rhythm at all. Now we're talking about one of the best players Marquette has, Cam Jones, and somebody that they absolutely have to get more from offensively if they're going to beat a team like Connecticut. Gold is checked back into the game. Joplin sits down. And Shaka changes that D and decides to give some token full court pressure. Hanson Johnson back on the floor to give Queen the blow. And this is the point of the game where... Dan Hurley and his staff, they don't look at this score necessarily. They continue to watch how his guys are playing, how they're playing together. If they're staying within the realm of their offensive set, it's important. Consistency. Diara fouled on the reach. Well, again, a quick look at what this game really does mean. I mean, a Connecticut victory would distance them by three games against their nearest opponent, and that would be Marquette. Although they do have uh, another matchup against the Golden Eagles on the road. But uh, that gives them a comfortable last two to three weeks before going into Madison Square Garden for the Big East tournament. I really thought, and again, you can compare Purdue and, and Connecticut, but they're not at all the same. And that they're not at all the same. They're not built the same. But... I do think both the one thing they have in common with Braden Smith and with Lance Jones to go along with Zach Eady, I think they've created the same separation in their league yeah. that Connecticut arguably has in its. Yeah, I agree. And, and they have those, you know, you mentioned a couple of them, Lawyer as well. Yep. Space them out around the good guy. Jones, the, the, the transfer that yeah. they picked up from Southern Illinois has made a huge difference defensively. And he's there, Cam Spencer. Yep, no doubt. And Chase Ross gets one to fall from downtown. 
Well, this is really a, an opportunity for them if they can make some threes because UConn has faltered on this end of the floor for the last two and a half minutes. The problem when you get down, one of the problems when you get down to UConn is they're not a, a fast teams, team in terms of pace. They're not going to play too fast, so you, it's hard to get more possessions back from them. Moving pitch on Johnson. So again, they've gotten a little sloppy on the offensive end, and Johnson gets his second. So this is your opportunity if you're Marquette. In the old days when they were called Warriors, they need to play a little more like Warriors the rest of the way here. Three turnovers in the last four trips for the Huskies. And there's another bump by Johnson. And you need to do it when Klingon's on the bench. Yep. All due respect to Samson Johnson, he's an athlete. He's a little more versatile, obviously, than Donovan Klingon, but just doesn't bring the same effect in terms of that spatial awareness that Klingon does. As well as Johnson played when he came in the first half, that was just a careless foul. Yeah, he'll sit down, Klingon gets back in. And those are tough. You got a guy with speed coming at you downhill, tough for any big. In traffic, cleaning again. Boy, what a difference he makes, right? Yeah, you can try it. <laughs> I, mean, I, I love the idea going into his chest. One extra pass. Connecticut spreads the floor and then comes downhill. And that creates contact inside and a foul. Now remember, he was on the bench a very short time, but as soon as he gets in the game, Donovan Klingon straight up understands his size, his length, and they always tell you, the coaches, challenge the big, challenge the big. Like I said, you can try it. Good job by Klingon. Eluding the foul. Well, they run to it, Newton. Diara for three. Yeah. That's been a big difference for not just him, but this team in general, to have another guy. I mean, he shot in the teens last year from three. No one would guard him. Now that he can make a couple, I tell you, it, it's a, it makes, it's a different complexion for this team when he's on the floor. Godaro, right where he wants it. By the way, the play of the eye, you think about it, now the Texas A&M transfer has got all the heat off. He's... He's not expected to do too much, just play a complimentary role. And today, with a dozen points, I'd say he's uh, yeah. he's helped Tristan Newton uh, and Castle and Spencer out quite a bit in the Connecticut backcourt. Great cut by De'Ara, right on cue. The lead back to 20. Jones, count it, and a foul. Tough shot, too, with the presence of Klingon. He went high, lurking off the window. Well, he does so much. We talk about defensively, but Donovan Klingon, the kick out, the extra pass from Caravan, uh, they call him hot. There are going to be games in the near future that could be tight, that could mean another championship, so forth and so on. So that's the focus there. Can't let your guard down no matter what the score is. As you know, Dan's got a marvelous wife who just had Valentine's Day and is always there with a brown bag at the end of every practice, every shoot around for the players to get some candy. Today, Mrs. Hurley's candy of choice was Hershey Kisses. Share the sugar, share the love. That's what UConn is doing today. She's got a halo, you know that. Spencer! From Klingon. 59 to 40. There's another one, 17 assists on 21 made field goals for UConn. Trey Norman in the game for the first time. Iguodaro again short arm that. No question, Klingon is altering almost everything going on around the baseline. Just take a look at this nice little action. Klingon, I think it's it's not talked about enough. Very underrated. And not just as, I think we can stop saying, for a big, he shoots free throws well. <laughs> you know, for, for a big, he's a yeah. good passer. He's just a good passer in general, and you saw it there. Legadaro was not ready for that pass. Jones with a bad idea. And that's testimony, I think, that Pam is not himself. 
Iguodara was not at all prepared for that pass. Klingon got it on the deck, became vulnerable, and Iguodaro with the pilfer. Finally, one falls for Stevie Mitchell. Yeah, but it is, that, that's Cam Jones. His yep. ego is yep. not easily bruised. Yep. We know that. Yep. <laughs> he's going to shoot an air ball Cam. or two, but he's going to make one, and he's going to keep shooting it. Well, I beg your pardon. That was Cam, and he needed it. He needed a confident <laughs> look. And that's what you're right. That's exactly what it was. It, yep. was. it was an open look. He wasn't rushed. Well, he shot it confidently, and he's been anything but today. Spencer, yeah. they're going to say it's out of bounds. Will be controlled. To Connecticut. Well, they may be talking about a change here. James Breeding has come over to talk to John Gaffney. Marquette's saying it's their ball. Well, I think the Marquette bench wants a flop on Cam yeah. Spencer, which we have not really seen. I, I, I have not seen it in all my games this season. Nor have time, I. No, you're right. Especially you're, in that three-point area. Nor have I. It was a point of emphasis last year. That was exactly the, the motion that uh, Shaka Smart made was, yeah. was a flop. You're absolutely spot on. There. It was something we saw called a lot in the opening stages of last season, but not this season. Yeah. And now they're looking to see if the ball hit the rim. They're not going to get the flop call, that's for sure. It did graze the rim. Connecticut does hold on to it. And Newton knows what to do with it. Just too much space. You stop on screens, you, you, you got to keep fighting around. That big screen up top, I know, by Klingon, but you just can't give up on it. Second chance points, 18 to 4. And another turnover by Jones. Newton wide open. Come up, Marquette. Listen to the Yukon. Yukon fans. One second away from the final four. And if you don't think this is one of those years when the Big East can pull off something no one would ever expect, Three teams in the final four. Think again. Yeah. Because with the right matchups, the Blue Jays can flourish along with UConn and Marquette. This has not been a typical Marquette performance today at all. You've not seen their best. For those of you that haven't seen Marquette as much this season as most. Gingham with a foul. Got him with the body. He did reject it, but he got him with the body. That's his first foul of the day. This is a hard call, too. You know, where does the play stop? Is it with the block, the deflection? Uh, it's it's the, ball. the hip got him <laughs> yes. in the shoulder on the block. And he did block the ball first. He yeah, blocked he the shot first, but there was some contact. Oh, sure. They give it to Diara instead. I'm told they're giving it to Diara instead of clean. So the foul was given to Diara, not to Klingon. I think the crowd thought what we did, that Donovan picked up that foul. Tristan Newton looks scoreless. Donnie, I know it seems like a long time ago, but he has not scored in the first 16 minutes. Now he's got 15. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what I mean. That's what, that's what your... Your, your MVP, there's your player of the year. That's yep. what they do. Absolutely. They're never out. Marquette coming with 2 2 1 pressure. Down by 20. Not looking to shake it up anyway. He can. UConn just built on that 16 point spread they had at halftime. Norman, one of the few clean layups Marquette has gotten all day. Castle 
Giving it up to Chase Ross. Castle working past Gold, clinging to clean it up. And he's not just standing in the paint, camping out, clinging. He's so much more mobile this year as well. Uh, Cole can't get a layup to fall. Well, they've been hard to come by for Marquette today. And he rushed it just a bit because of the presence of Donovan. He's now 7 of 8 from the floor, 16 points, and he's two rebounds away from a double-double. He's got eight. This is another example of the right buttons pushed in that in the huddle that Danny Hurley had. Huh? Clean it up. Yep. The arrow against the clock. Clean again. Too strong for the foul. Going to get Joplin, I think, with an arm. Wow. He picks up the foul. Well, the big inside. Donnie Klingon. At the end of the half, it just been unstoppable. I, you know, it's interesting. A lot of records being broken here in this building by this UConn team. I think you just broke a record by coming on camera <laughs> and not allowing your play your well your I don't know why they I don't know why they moved away <laughs> from you. Yeah I had no We're idea. out of time. There's a game happening. Well I'm thinking Cleveland was he had ten seconds before he could have stayed up. Oh, I gotta talk to the director's guild. I gotta talk to the director's guild. But no truthfully this is an unbelievably talented Marquette team. It really that's is been dismantled today. Coming into a game like today, Dan Hurley said this is Yes, it's about X's and O's, but yep. it's also culture versus great culture. Yep. You know, it really is a culture game, and no matter what happens on that scoreboard at the end of the game, there's no denying that Marquette's culture is far and above where I think anyone thought it would be before they hired Chaka Smart. In traffic. Once again, the block out by Samson Johnson strong that time. Ibadaro not able to get anywhere close to that. I think that was a shot clock violation on you, actually. I think. <laughs> hey, I've oh. given you a record number of layouts today, and you did not take advantage. Oh, hey. <laughs> Spencer, oh, that was a beautiful play defensively to get in there by Cam Jones. Knocked that one away. Six minutes left. Let's see if Marquette can offer any area of offensive improvement, but it's not to be for Joplin today. Samson Johnson has his pocket picked. Outlet to Joplin. Spencer's with him. Oh, he almost, in trying to save the ball, he almost knocked it in. And he's still on the deck. Spencer's on the other end of the floor. It's five on four here for Caravan. Carabingo! Bingo! Bongo! Joplin went down. And just a free, live ball, no foul, but it was, a, it was a good no call. Kind of the way the game's been going. Yep. Numbers five on four, and UConn knocks down a three. Well, <laughs> Igadaro <laughs> finally gets one close enough to the rim to jam, and he did in frustration. See, that's what we saw more of against Butler, jumping the basketball. Not as many ball handlers for Butler. That's when Marquette was really good, getting the ball out of that comfort zone. Yeah. They just haven't had the opportunity to do that. Jump the ball, not necessarily trap, but just get the ball out of guys' hands. Another great pass from Newton inside. 22 assists today at 70 in their last three games for Connecticut. Jones, skying for the rebound, Newton again. It's just a bounce in Connecticut step. And Marquette's shoulders are slumping as they continue to share it. And share it! Spencer, the lead is to 29. Approval by this UConn crowd is evident, and it's been non-stop. Building has been on fire today. 
You know, finish like pros, be sportsmanlike. We will meet again, and they will meet again. Oh, soon. yes, they will. Yes, they will. This is just the first of three that they've got between now. One would think that they would meet up in the tournament. Arquette is will fall into second, three games behind in the aftermath of this game in the standings of the regular season. As they stand right now, and remember, Creighton is uh, beginning to play like Creighton of old, but they would only have um, a one-game lead on Creighton as Igadaro gets that beautiful lob from Kolick. We just have not seen the best of the pick and roll version of those two. And that's how they started the game, Tim, if you remember. That's exactly how they started the game, clinging in, in no man's land, and then they just it was either stopped or they went away from it. Game was tied at 18 for those of you that just joined us. And then in the last 10 minutes of the first half, it was a 24-8 blitzkrieg to give UConn a 16-point edge at the break, and they never looked back. Now, how deep is UConn? Think about it. Castle and Caravan, a, a combined two out of 14. Castle and Caravan combined two of 14 today, and yet here they are, almost up by 30. And when you talk to scouts around the league, that's what they talk about. Who are you going to stop? Yeah. Stop two. There's two more that can hurt you. Standing ovation for Spencer and Newton as they check out. Newton is coming up next. And a huge matchup against Villanova next week. Back Gamble. Nice little scoop to the hoop by Norman, the Bostonian by way of Wooster Academy. I think it's important, you know, for coaches to make sure they punctuate the fact that it's one game. We have some things we have to clean up, and you and I, talking to Chaka Smart before this game, said, you know, you learn a lot from your losses. We learn a lot about ourselves from our losses, more than probably in wins, and this is another one of those games where if you're not winning, you're learning. Solomon Ball has checked into the game to operate at the point for Connecticut. Here's Zigadaro isolated against Samson Johnson. Everything the so contested and he's been out of rhythm all day and having to deal with those adjustments when Johnson's on the floor versus Klingon adds to that frustration. That's almost an embarrassment of pieces, right? In terms of yes. your depth, when you see that. 25 bench points. Now you see the remaining season schedule for Marquette. That'll be an outstanding game. It could be very meaningful against Creighton on March the 2nd. Samson Johnson is out with five. He'll get a nice round of applause. Deara checks out. Usroff Singer has checked in. 24 for Connecticut here in the last minute, 14. Bostolus Rumaglu is also out there for the first time. Number 33, the youngster from Greece. 6'8 sophomore, number 33. Everybody going to get it in the box score today. Oh, did I see the Hurley kid? <laughs> I'm looking. Maybe they, maybe Danny wants him to chant for him. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> Andrew Hurley. Oh, it's tough when you bring in five freshmen. <laughs> you know, you want to give them time, too. Yeah. You don't have a one versus four matchup in the same league that often. No. And this was... Uh, a much anticipated game. We thought it would be a monster matchup. But at that point, at 18 all, after 
Iguodaro made that teardrop. They were dominated, and the inability to make shots from deep early, yeah. I think, caught up with them, and then Klingon just began to dominate inside. Yeah, he continues to be a difference maker. You know, when he was out with that foot injury, really took care of his fitness as much as he could, lost some weight. And I think it's showing right now in, in his play, not just the length of time he's playing, Klingon, but how he's playing in those minutes on the floor. He's, he's sharp, he's bouncy, and active. Well, Amadou setting that pick. Norman gets the ball fake and then throws up an air ball. I want to thank our crew today, our producer, Max Linewall, along with our director, Tyler Dare, associate director, Paul Mamaho, along with broadcast associate, Josh Franz, and technical director, Paul Harvath. Job well done, gentlemen. And Danny Hurley has a lot of respect for Chaka Smart, and they embrace at midcourt, knowing full well they, too, We'll meet again, and maybe and soon again, again. Heck of a performance by UConn. I'd say they're number one with a bullet bullet. <laughs> Enjoy it, partner.